Welcome everyone to this mix-up tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about counteractions and how you can use these within your commands to keep track of various numbers that you can use for individual interaction or tracking stats over time or any sort of different cool combinations you can come up with. Just a side note, we want to start off by thanking our Patreon users who support us for this. Um, they do this of their own accord, but we greatly appreciate it and their support is what helps us a lot to be able to create these videos for you all to be able to use. So thank you again to all our Patreon users in advance for this. So to get started off with, what are counteractions? Well, counteractions are essentially a way for you to track a number. Um, now these are a little bit different than consumables like currency and rank. A counter is a universal number that's across everything within the app. It's a singular number. Whereas stuff like currencies and ranks those are a per person number. So the number that they have is unique to the person that has that. So counters are more for different scenarios, perhaps around maybe a shared number that's gonna be used across all users for something, or maybe to keep track of a number as things go up or down, or for tracking how many times something has happened overall. So there's a variety of different options you can use. And we'll go through a few examples of ways you could use a counter in this uh, video that we're gonna make today. So before we go digging into the actual commands themselves and how to use them in there, first we want to take you over to the settings page. So if you go up and click the settings cog wheel in the top right corner here, there's a dedicated section of the settings for counters here specifically. And you can visit this area to not only add custom counters at will, but also be able to see what their values are, delete them, or edit them in certain ways. Now this isn't the only way you can interact with counters. You can always make counters directly through a command. And when you add a counter into there, it'll automatically get added into this list when it's used. This is just another way you can kind of see what the status of your counters are to begin with. So to start with, we're gonna just make a quick counter here. We'll just call it test for right now. So I'm gonna type in the word test and click add. And you'll see it adds this counter here to the top and it says a amount of number that starts with zero. And it gives you two other options here, save to file and reset on load. Save to file will take the value of this counter and write it out to a file that we have in a dedicated folder of Mix It Up. And every time that that number is updated inside Mix It Up only, it will update the counter in there. Now, making any changes to the file itself and changing the number in there won't update the counter that Mix It Up stores. This is just a one way writing of the information as it changes. You could use this, for example, if you had um, in your streaming software, maybe you had a text file source that could set up to read numbers from a text file and display it on there, you could use this save to file option to handle that for you if you wanted. And the reset on load option here specifically will when every time mix up launches will reset the counter back to zero no matter what value it has. Completely optional if you want to use, you want to use it, but uh, it could be used for different things such as maybe um, you know, maybe you have a value that you want to track per stream, like how many follows you get within a stream. You could have this be set, reset on to load, and then you could have a counter that you use there that tracks every time you get a follow in a stream. So you want to maybe have it be a, a counter that shows on your stream, for example, be able to show that. So now that we've shown here the basic areas where you can interact with some counters, let's actually dig into a command and walk through some scenarios what you can do with that. So we're going to close this down. We're going to head to the commands page, and we're just going to click over on new commands to add a brand new command to work with. So inside here, we're just gonna start off by just making a very basic command, nothing super fancy. We'll just call it test and test. And we're gonna go open up the action command here and we're gonna look for the counter action. So there are a few ways you can interact with counters. You can both be able to create and update their values and you can also use the value that's inside the counter itself in other actions. So we're just gonna start off by, for example, just using the value that's in the actual counter itself. So we're just gonna use a chat message here and in the chat message, we're just going to simply type whatever the name of our counter is with a dollar sign in front of it. So for example, our counter was called test. So by just typing dollar sign test, that's going to correspond to the value of the counter. Now, if we save this and run it, we'll be able to see exactly when we run it, the counter value should be zero because we set it to zero to start with. Now, back over here, if we go over to the chat page, we just saved our command and we just run explanation point test here you'll see we're going to get back the value zero because the counter's default value is zero, so we haven't said anything to it. And we can test this out real quick by heading over to the settings area, going to counters, and we can actually just change the value directly in here, just change it to two, and then we'll close this back down. If we rerun test now this time, we'll see the value is two because that's the value stored inside the counter. 
Now, how we show this in a chat message, for example, just doing dollar sign test, we can use that in anywhere special identifiers work. So we can use this, for example, inside of conditional actions. We can use this inside of a overlay action or a sound action or a consumable action, all sorts of different ways we can use it. The sky's kind of the limit. We'll do one or two examples of possible ways you can do, but really when you're thinking about this, just try to think of how you want to use these numbers and where you want to interact with them, for example. Now let's go back and look at the commands that we just made and let's add a few more things to it to up it a little bit. So back inside our command here, we have our chat message that lists out what the actual value of the counter is. But let's add a little more to it. Let's make this command increase the counter by one every time we run it and then show what the value is. So we're going to go to the action list here and we're going to add a counter action into here. Now, just like with all of our commands, order is important. If we have our message that sends the counter and then we update the counter afterwards, the number that we show is actually not going to be accurate to what we update it to because we're sending the message before we update the value. So what we want to do is we want to update our counter first and then send a message for what the actual value is. Now on here, for example, you'll see the same two options we had before, save to file and reset on load. There's actually a quick link right here that'll take you to the folder where the counter files are saved to, if you ever want to reference that in other outside programs. On the left here, we have the drop down that shows you all the lists of counters you have, and you can also just type the name of a counter directly in here, and that will make a brand new counter for you. In this case, we have test already, so we're just going to select that from here. And on here, we have three options for counters, update, reset, and set. Update takes the current value and adds an amount to it, so it updates it by a certain amount. Reset resets the value back down to zero, and set sets the value of the counter to whatever we specify. So they do different functions depending on how you want to interact with a counter. In our case, we're just going to do update because we want to add one to it every time. So we're just going to type the value one in here, and then we're just going to save this out and give it a try real quick. Now that we're back here on the chat page, let's go run our command we have. Now the value we had set in there last was two, because that's the number we had in there previously. So when we run this now, it's going to update that value by one, and then it's going to show the new number, which should be three, since two plus one is three. So if I run this here, we're going to say three, because we added one to the counter. If I rerun this again, it's going to now say four. We run it again, now say five, etc., etc. So very, very basic counter you could use here. Now how could you apply this? You could apply this, for example, maybe if you had a death counter in your stream, where you wanted to be able to have someone be able to add one to the number of deaths you have, and then show what that value is every single time it happens. Just change test in this case to deaths or something of that sort. So let's go look at another example of how we could implement this in a way. So if we head over to the events page, we talked about one earlier here where, for example, you could do something where every time you get a follow, you track the total number of follows you have. So let's use this as an example here. The same way we built that previous command, we can do the same idea in here, for example. So we're in our quick follow command here. And like I said, it's going to be a very basic example. We're just going to start off by first making a counter action here to actually track the new counter we want to have. And we're rather than using an existing one, we're going to make a new one here. So we're just going to call this follows. And we're going to say update by one. And you know what, we'll even save this out to a file for right now. We're not going to use it, but just to show we can toggle the option. And I'm also going to toggle reset on load so that we track the total number of follows that are unique per stream. Since we shut down mix up every time we're done using it, we would relaunch it and it would reset the counter to zero at the very beginning. And then we're just going to add a chat message here that just says something like, um, thanks for the follow. And we'll say dollar sign username since that's the name of the person that followed us. And we'll just say something like total follows today, dollar sign follows. So that's going to keep track of our counter that we have here. Now let's add one more thing to just up it a little bit, for example. So we're going to add an overlay action here. And what we're just going to do is add a text option. Scroll down a little bit so we can see it here. And we'll just say something like, um, I don't know, let's see here. We're going to have it do something where it bounces in from the left and then bounces out from the right and it shows it for five seconds and maybe we'll put it at the bottom of the screen 
And we're just going to have it say the same sort of idea. Total follows today, dollar sign follows. So you see now we can use that counter in multiple different ways to use it for different values if we wanted to. Now if we say this out and run, this is going to work very conceptually the same way that we saw for our other chat action that we had, chat command we had there. It'll say, you know, thank you for the follow, whoever it was that followed, and then it'll show the total number of follows since we're going to add one to it every single time it gets added. And then we'll also just show something of this same sort of idea on the overlay. So I'm not going to go into, a specific, go into super detail showing it, but basic idea of what we would do here, for example. Now that we're back here, just to kind of show how we made that new counter, if we go over to settings real quick, under counters, you'll see that counter we just saved in there is now in here. And it has all our options for save to file, reset on load, already toggled for that. So whenever you toggle those options, they're universal for that specific counter. So you don't have to worry about having to toggle them on every single action you made. As long as you save them in the, fir in the first one, they will transfer over to any other area that you use them on. Now let's do one more quick example of something that's a little more complex to use counters for, but just to show how you can maybe do some slightly more interesting or crazy ideas with counters, just to give some ideas. So we're gonna make another chat command, and this one we're just gonna call countdown. And what it's gonna simply do is it's gonna start from five, and it's gonna count down five, four, three, two, one, and say something like blast off afterwards. But we're gonna use a combination of counters, chat messages, and conditionals to work all those pieces together. So let's go over here to our command area, and we're gonna make a new command that handles that for us. So over here, we're now inside our command. So we're gonna get our setup here with our little countdown idea. So we're just gonna call this countdown, and then we'll just make it exclamation point countdown. And what this is gonna do is first, we're gonna start off by making a counter here, and we'll call this uh, countdown. And we're gonna have it set itself first to five. We wanna start the number at five, since we're gonna count down from five all the way down to one. And inside of here, we're now going to use a conditional action. Now we have a separate video entirely that talks about conditional action, so we're not gonna go super, super in depth about this. We're just gonna focus on how the counter aspect of this plays into this. So if you wanna learn more about counters, I encourage you to check out that YouTube video on it. It goes super into detail about all the different sort of stuff you can do with, count with uh, conditional actions. So we're gonna add this in here, and we're gonna toggle a few things here. First thing is we're gonna to toggle repeat while true because this conditional is going to be responsible for counting down that number for us and showing that number. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to use that counter we just made here, and we're going to use it on the left side here for countdown. And on the left side here, what we're going to say is, while countdown is greater than zero. And what this is going to do is it's going to say, countdown while it's bigger than zero, because we're counting down from five, four, three, two, one, when we hit zero, we want this to not repeat anymore. So in this conditional, we're going to be responsible for having to take this number, this countdown, and subtracting one from it every single time we repeat. How do we do that? Well, we first start off by adding in a counter action. And then in that counter action, we're just going to have it do update. We're going to list out the countdown. Now, it's not going to show in the dropdown yet because we haven't saved the command. Once we save the command, it'll actually start appearing in the dropdown here. So just be aware of that. If you see it's not in there, that's why. And for the amount, we're just going to do minus one this time. So we update it by subtracting one from it every single time. And then finally, we're going to add a chat message to it to say what the value of the countdown is here. Now, before we go any further, I want to talk a little about what we talked about earlier, that order of actions matter. and They're very important in this case. We start off by setting the counter to be five. So when we go into here, the value is going to be five. However, the first thing we do is we subtract one from it, and then we say what the countdown value is. So in this case, when it gets into here, it's going to say, okay, remove one from countdown, and it's going to bring it to four. And then we're going to say four, instead of starting out at five, which we want to start with the countdown, since we always start our countdowns at five. So we're going to switch the order of this by moving the chat message first. So it says what the number is, then it subtracts one from it. Now this is going to repeat while countdown is greater than zero. So it's going to start off here and do five. It's going to say five. It's going to subtract one from it and go to four. Four is still greater than zero. So it's going to go to four. It's going to subtract one from it, go to three, then go to two, go to one. Then when it hits zero, 
this condition is no longer true, so it's going to kick out and go on to the next bigger action here. So we're going to add one more action at the very end, just another chat message, that just says something like, blast off. So this is going to count down all together, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and that's going to say blast off when the command is over. So let's save this and give this a try real quick. So back here on the main page, we're going to head to the chat section. We're going to try out our countdown command by just doing exclamation point countdown. So when we run this, what's going to happen is it's going to pound bump and put all those numbers right back to each other. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off, just like we saw. Now, if you wanted to make this a little more advanced, you could add a wait action in addition to that conditional to make it actually time out 5, wait a second, 4, wait a second, 3, wait a second, etc. Right now it's not waiting one second in between, so it's going to go through these numbers a lot faster. But that's just a little additional thing, but that's unrelated to the counters part. But you can see it goes from our counter and it uses the value of our counter to go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off. And because our first action is setting the value to 5, if I rerun this again, it's going to start right back off at 5 and count its way down again. So we're making sure that we set the value every single time we run it so we can use it as many times as we want to. And that brings us to the close of the tutorial video on counteractions. We hope you enjoyed and found this information useful. If you have any questions about counteractions specifically, make sure to please visit our Discord server, which you can get by going to mixitupapp.com discord. It's a great place to go if you have any questions or comments about things you want to be able to use uh, counters for, or if you're trying to figure out a way you can integrate them into your stream. Once again, thank you to our Patreon patrons for being able to support these videos that we make. Uh, they're very, very generous to help us out. It's completely unnecessary, but it helps us a lot to create this awesome content that we can share out with you all to, be able to basically help increase your mix-up experience and all the cool things you can do with it. So with that said, thank you for watching this tutorial video. We hope you enjoy this and you've seen some of our previous ones and look forward to our next ones coming up. Thank you all. Have yourself a great day. Bye, everybody.